What's up guys, Atlas here with my brand new basic training video. Today, I'm going to show you how to improve your game with just a few easy steps. Let's get started. Okay, first off, let's talk about communication. A team that does not communicate does not win. You need to be in constant communication with your teammates about where they are, where you think they are, and where you are. Now, a team that will communicate throughout the entire game is likely to win. A team that does not communicate will be scattered, you will be angry, and you will have no idea where the enemies are coming from until it's too late. And you guys will know if you've ever listened to professional players talk during their professional games, they never stop talking. They also keep a good attitude, they laugh, they make jokes, but they never stop talking and they always tell each other what they're seeing. Something else that's on par with communication is your own awareness. You need to make sure that you're checking corners constantly throughout the game. You never know where an enemy might be. Now, awareness can be broken down into several subcategories, but I'm going to simplify it to corner checking, map checking, and of course, listening to what's around you. Now you've probably noticed in this first segment of the video, I've been looking in corners and showing common places that enemies hide. This is because it's a informational and B shows you how you need to be doing it. Corner checking is a vital aspect of the game and if you don't do it you can expect to die way more than is necessary. And now something that will get you and your teammates killed if you're not careful is map checking. I have no teammates in this little bot match of mine but when you do have teammates you need to be aware of where they are and this falls into communication as well. If they tell you where they are you can expect them to be there. If their dot is no longer there and they haven't said anything you can probably expect that somebody has killed them. Now if you are aware of where your teammates are you're much less likely to shoot them and you're much less likely to be surprised. This means when someone comes around a corner you're already going to know if they're a friendly or not. That way you can be ready to shoot and ready to eliminate or in some cases hold your fire. Now, the last, and in my opinion, the most vital section of all awareness is you need to know where you can hear enemy footsteps. When you know where you can hear them, you know where they're going to be or where they aren't. If you can't hear any footsteps mid, you can already narrow it down to A long or B. And of course, that varies from map to map where these spots are. Now here I am showcasing one of my favorite spots. If you sit right by that mid door, you can hear them in lower tons, and you can hear them if you're moving around in CT spawn. And that's of course just one of the many spots you can use. I like to use it because it's easily accessible and it's easily defensible if somebody finds me. It's also one of the spots that people forget to corner check a lot, so it's very safe. And in the worst case scenario, I can just hide and let the team pass. Next up, I'm going to cover gaming equipment, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about the headset since I just covered footsteps, and this is directly related. Now, you need a good headset so that you can hear footsteps clearly. One of my friends owns a headset, but he can't even hear footsteps. It just provides sound. It's not a good headset, so if you want to be able to hear footsteps and you want to be able to up your game, you've got to buy a high-quality headset. And for that, I recommend something like a Steel Series or a Logitech headset or an Astro headset. Astro makes some of the best headsets out there, although I personally use a Steel Series. I can hear footsteps way better than most people. Honestly, it's up to you. Find a headset that's comfortable on your head and just use it. Next up is the monitor. Now this is something I don't personally have a whole lot of experience with. I use an Alienware laptop so the screen's kind of built in. But I do know that if you want a good gaming experience you need to get a 120 hertz monitor. A 60 hertz monitor will not be nearly as good, it can't keep up with the frame rate sometimes, and it's a lot less pleasing on your eyes. 120 hertz monitors are a lot easier to stare at for long periods of time, and if you're playing this for a long period of time, you're going to want 120 hertz. Overall, it's just a better monitor to have in your house. Now that you know what kind of monitor you need to be using, let's move on to the keyboard. A good gaming keyboard is going to have extra buttons that you can remap so that you can make a more comfortable layout for any game that you're playing. And of course, you want to find a keyboard that fits your hands comfortably. I personally hate mechanical keyboards. I like the flat keyboard layouts. I think they're more comfortable, but most people don't feel that way, especially professional gamers. They like the raised up keys and the sounds that the keyboard makes so that you can confirm a key has been pressed. So what you need to do here is you need to find a keyboard that fits your play style and you need to find a good company to buy it from. So once again, you have SteelSeries, Logitech, and this time Razer. I don't believe Astro makes any keyboards, but they might look out for them if you want. 
Now, finally, for this gaming equipment section, let's talk about the mouse. First off, you're probably going to want something wireless, but when you're shopping for a wireless mouse, you want to be super careful and make sure that it doesn't have any reviews talking about the lag that it gets. The mouse in the picture is actually the one that I use. It's called the Sensei Wireless. It's by SteelSeries. Terrific mouse. And it's absolutely worth the money, but if you don't want to spend that much money, go over to a Logitech mouse. The main thing you need to worry about is does it have adjustable sensitivity and does it lag? Is the tracking on the bottom of the mouse good? These are the most important things you need to consider when you're buying a mouse. Just make sure it fits your hand comfortably. And of course, make sure you like it. If you don't like it, you don't need to buy it. And of course, let me give you my recommendations on companies to buy mice from real quick. I definitely say Steel Series is my number one. Razer would probably be my number two. And Logitech would be my number three because they've got decent mice, but they're kind of cheap. But that's okay for some people. They work just fine, but it's definitely not my number one or number two. Now here's something new players don't do and even some seasoned veterans don't do. Pro players, of course, do it, and that's knowing your economy. And it's also knowing the enemy team's economy. First off, you need to think about what the enemy is going to have and what you need to get in response. If you just lost a round and you have about $1,200 to your name and so does the rest of your team, that means it's time to save for a round. Now here's where knowing the enemy's economy really comes in handy. You don't get an exact dollar figure, but you can make a good guess based on how many rounds they've won and how well they're doing in those rounds. If you just lost pistol rounds, you can pretty much guarantee they're going to load up on SMGs or scouts. That means you need to respond with SMGs or have another save round and just hold on until you can afford something to fight them with. Now that you know the basics of economy, let's talk about how to use your grenades. First of all, you need to use your grenades. I don't see enough people in games actually use what they have. Grenades are pretty cheap, so really, when it's a life or death situation, you might as well start chucking them. Now, a cool thing to learn is cool places to throw grenades. Neat little bounce tricks that you can use. And bounce tricks are just cool places or tricky places that you can throw grenades to bounce them into an area that would otherwise be harder to reach with your grenade. Now, these vary wildly from map to map, so I'm not going to show you every single one. Sorry, but that's just impractical. Now, here's something that is practical and very easy to practice. Crosshair placement. When you're running around corners, a lot of people don't have their crosshairs aimed correctly. They have them aimed at the ground and not where they should be, not at heads. So start teaching yourself where heads are on each corner that you usually round with a gun so that when you round that corner with an AK, you can easily get your head shot and you can be that guy who's one tapping everybody on your team. Now something that goes right along with crosshair placement is mastering your guns and learning how to use each one specifically. Now of course the best way to do this is just to keep practicing with each one but sometimes you may be wondering what should I practice? Well it's pretty simple. You need to know the starting pistols first off. In all competitive matches the pistol rounds can be a very important deciding factor in who's going to win the next few rounds. So if you have those mastered, you can headshot this, and you can headshot that, and you can roll on smooth. Next up, you're going to want to learn the rifles. This is the AK-47, the M4A1S, and the M4A4. The M4A4 and the M4A1S are both very accurate, whereas the AK is not. It is notorious for its horrible spray, where you basically have to aim directly at the ground to hit anybody. But it does have the most accurate first bullet in the game, and it is an easy headshot once you have it mastered. Now once you have the rifles mastered, you'll want to move on to the sniper rifles. While technically in the same rifle category, you're going to want to learn them too. The AWP is hands down the most used sniper rifle in the entire game due to its one hit body shot and 85 damage leg shot. Now on the other end of the spectrum you have the scout rifle or the SSG-08. The scout rifle does significantly less damage but allows greater mobility. And due to that greater mobility, this draws some players to use the scout more than the op, because a lot of people don't expect a sniper to be running around and shooting them at the same time. A great thing that you can do with the scout rifle is jump shot. You can't do that with any other rifle in the game, at least not accurately. 
This gives the scout a huge advantage over the AWP as long as you can manage not to get hit. Now before we end this basic training video, I'm going to leave you with a couple more thoughts. First off, you need to play with higher skilled players. That will challenge you and make you a better player. Now second, you want to watch other players. This seems a little weird. Well, if you watch other players, you can see all these tips and tricks that they've gained from watching other players themselves. I learn new bomb plant spots and new hiding spots all the time because I watch new players or even old players. People do weird things that you've never seen before. It's always interesting to watch either way. And the last portion of this, nothing else matters in this video if you cannot do this. Focus on your game and remain level-headed. In Dota 2, it's called going on tilt when you start getting angry and your gameplay is affected. It's easy to get angry at your teammates. I understand. Trust me, I do. But you need to remain level-headed. What I do is I just take a deep breath, and I know it sounds cheesy, but I seriously just take a deep breath, sometimes drag my hands over my face, and claw my eyes a little bit. And I think that's honestly the last bit of advice that I can give you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. When you comment, I always read them, and I will do my best to reply to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. More to come soon.